Newspapers, online, television news, it's on demand, it's available 24 hours a day if you like, 365 days a year. Pages of it, hours of it, whole websites devoted to all sorts of subjects. But I've wondered if you ever stopped to think, where and how do you find news? Where do you look? Where do you go? How do you find a story? It's not like it's an apple, for example, which just drops off a tree into your hand and there it is, a piece of news. You can't, for example, go to a supermarket and just buy it off the shelf. It's worth asking yourself as well, what is a story? The classic definition, I suppose, is dog bites man, not really a story. Man bites dog, definitely is, something completely different. Why? Because there's a human interest there. You're looking for something that makes you go wow. You're looking for the wow factor, something that makes you sit up and take notice. Is it new? Is it unusual? Is it different? Is it relevant? How important is it to people? How does it affect their lives? Above all, what's the human interest? The easiest way is to be given a story. In a newsroom, in a sports room, the sports editor, the news editor, he or she may say, this is a story which is important. You need to cover it, away you go. I wonder if you thought of other ways of finding news. It could be a story that you're involved in or a family friend's involved in. For example, floods or heavy snow, really difficult weather conditions, and it involves people that you know living in the area, living in your street, living in the region. When you've decided on your story, you need to work out how am I going to tell it? Where am I going to find the information? What's important? What do I need to find out? What's relevant? Who do I need to talk to? My first assignment was for a radio station based in a hospital. I wanted to become a sports reporter, so I had to learn how to do it. I needed a pad of paper, I needed a pen, and I had to be able to identify players, I had to be able to identify how the goals were scored, how it all happened, and I also had to learn how to take notes. So in a sense, it was quite a straightforward assignment because there was only one source of information. It was live, it was first-hand, over 90 minutes of a football match. But your story, may involve you doing research on the internet. There are lots of websites, there's social media. You'll need to make sure though that any information you find there is reliable, is trustworthy. You can't immediately just think, I'll go on Wikipedia and automatically trust it, because that may not necessarily be true. You'll need to interview the people involved in your story, and you may find that they have different stories to tell, so you'll need to make sure that you've got a good idea of how the facts stand in your mind. And then after the interviews, see how all the stories match up. For example, you may be doing a story about the floods, and you may talk to one witness who says that the water level was six metres high. And then you may go and talk to someone, a rescue worker, who says it was one metre high. So who do you believe? Was it really six metres? Or was it one metre? Was someone getting their measurements all wrong? Or were they in a completely different place? One person was in one street, the other person was in another part of the town. So you've got to weigh up the evidence all the time you're looking for the facts. You also want to know who's telling the truth? Who do you believe? Is somebody saying something because they want to get the other person into trouble? Have they got a different agenda? Have they got an ulterior motive? You'll also want to give each interviewee exactly the same amount of time. You cannot show any bias or any favouritism. You're just there to report what happened. So, that's all about finding the news. In the next film, we're going to look at how you can gather news. We'll see you then.